What's up, guys? This is Vinyl like Puma, and today I'd like to go over 10 of what I think are some of the best combat and assault rifles in Borderlands history. Now, before we start, this video will include assault rifles and combat rifles from across all the main series games. So that means Borderlands 1 combat rifles are going to be put together and compared with some of the best assault rifles that Borderlands 2, as well as the pre-sequel, have to offer. Also, there are a ton of amazing assault and combat rifles across all three of the games. So if you don't see your own favorite or personal best weapon in this video, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, it just means that it didn't make the list. However, without further ado, I am pleased to present what I think are the top 10 best combat and assault rifles in Borderlands history, starting now. Number 10. The Rapier Assault Rifle from Borderlands 2 While the Rapier is an awful assault rifle, it's without a doubt the best melee weapon in the game. Where most other bladed melee weapons cap out at around 50% melee damage bonus, and other more specialized melee weapons like the Law Pistol cap out at 100% melee damage bonus, the Rapier caps out at 200% melee damage bonus, making it essentially the perfect melee weapon for melee focused builds. Especially on characters like Zero, who can become quite powerful with this weapon once it's paired with the right Roid Shield and some of his skills. Of course, the rapier isn't without its problems. Like I said, it's awful when used as a conventional assault rifle simply because the base damage is just way too low. Also, like many other cursed weapons from the Captain Scarlet DLC, the rapier suffers from its own curse, as the player will take increased damage from melee attacks while it's equipped in hand. While you may find this curse isn't too bad, especially if you're using Zero, it can potentially be more annoying on other characters that aren't quite as melee focused. Ultimately, you're going to want to use this weapon as a part of a melee build, as using it like you would a conventional assault rifle will be very frustrating. But if you want the rapier, it can be acquired by completing the Message in a Bottle side quest located in Hater's Folly in the Captain Scarlet DLC. Number 9. The Chopper Combat Rifle from Borderlands 1 Even though there is a chopper in Borderlands 2, I think the original chopper from the very first Borderlands is the best variant. Not only is the original chopper much better looking, but I think its reduced magazine size actually helps it. After all, you aren't depleting your entire ammo supply while using the Borderlands 1 chopper, while you are if you're using the Borderlands 2 version. Another thing that makes the Borderlands 1 version more viable is the player's potential gear selection in the original game. Unlike Borderlands 2, where only Salvador can really regenerate ammo, Borderlands 1 allows for more ammo regeneration options. Not only can you equip something like the TDR Guardian or TDR Avenger, which will help the player regenerate combat rifle ammo, but you can also either play as or play with someone using Roland, as he has two class mods that can help regenerate combat rifle ammo. This flexibility for regenerating ammo ultimately ends up making the chopper far more viable than it is in Borderlands 2, where ammo costs really start to skyrocket in an Ultimate Vault Hunter mode. But if you want the OG Chopper, you can acquire it from an enemy named Motorhead during or after the Little People Big Experiment side quest that is available with the General Knox DLC. The original Chopper is actually a pretty awesome weapon, and again, I highly recommend it. Number 8. The Gatling Gun Assault Rifle for Borderlands 2 and the Pre-Sequel so, the Gatling Gun is quite possibly one of the best Jacob's Assault Rifles that's available in both Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel. While it's definitely outperformed by the Jacob's Becca in Borderlands 2, the major advantage that the Gatling Gun has going for it compared to other assault rifles is its unique characteristics. Specifically, the addition of a x3 projectile multiplier along with improved critical bonus generally put this weapon above most other assault rifles, allowing an impressive amount of damage per trigger pull. Plus, what's also great about this weapon is that it's a non-unique weapon. This allows the player to obtain a Gatling gun in several different rarities throughout both games, potentially making it a great choice regardless of level or difficulty. So, while a lot of other weapons on this list tend to be the most effective at maximum level, the Gatling Gun is potentially a great choice regardless of level as it's generally easier to obtain. I think my only complaint with the Gatling Gun would revolve around its ammo consumption and magazine size. 
three bullets per shot is quite high, and assuming you don't get the flush variants, which improves the magazine size, you may find yourself reloading more than you would like. Even still, the Gatling gun is a phenomenal weapon, and if you want one, it can be obtained from any suitable loot source. Number 7. The Draco Combat Rifle from Borderlands 1 like a number of other weapons from Borderlands 1, the Draco is a pretty bizarre legendary that's glitched. After all, it doesn't appear as a legendary would, and it lacks red text on its item card, meaning you could easily overlook this gun while looting various enemies. Now, the reason the Draco appears this way is supposedly due to a glitch in the game that allows the Draco Combat Rifle accessory to appear on green, blue, and purple rarity weapons, but for whatever reason, the accessory doesn't override those weapons' rarity by turning them into either yellow, orange, or dark orange. If you're confused and having a hard time finding one of these, it's important to remember that the Draco is always a combat rifle manufactured by SNS Munitions, it only comes in fire elements, and most importantly, the Draco always has a more cylindrical looking accessory on the bottom of its barrel when compared to other SNS Munitions combat rifles. So in general, if you keep an eye out for a Fire Elemental SNS Musician's Combat Rifle with a cylindrical accessory, then you're going to find yourself a Draco. Otherwise, the Draco is an awesome weapon because of that accessory. Not only are you getting improved proc chance, but you are also getting decreased recoil, decreased projectile spread, and improved magazine size. Also, compared to the standard incendiary accessory for combat rifles, the Draco accessory has no damage reduction, making it totally superior in my humble opinion. Ultimately, while this weapon may be really difficult to find, as long as you always check all of the SNS Fire Elemental Combat Rifles that you see, you should come upon one of these eventually. Number 6. The Kitten Assault Rifle from Borderlands 2 so, the Kitten is a pretty great assault rifle that was added with the Torg DLC. In fact, it's special in the sense that it's a moxie weapon, which allows the player to heal off of damage dealt, and it's also pretty great in the sense that it's a times 3 projectile multiplier weapon with fairly high fire rate. So, not only are you going to be able to quickly heal off of the damage that you're dealing, but you're also going to be having some pretty decent DPS as well. So, I would say it's a pretty great combination. With that said, I do have a number of complaints. For starters, the Kitten has a smiley face projectile pattern, which greatly reduces its range potential and forces you to use it for short range fights only. Also, another issue with the Kitten is that it doesn't do well against enemies with physical armor. So, you may have issues with enemies like the shield-wielding nomads located in Bloodshot Stronghold, as well as some of the occasional goliaths and other enemies that have armor plates that negate damage. Otherwise though, the Kitten is quite lethal and is a gun you should definitely pick up if you have the Torg DLC. And if you want it, be sure to complete the Everybody Wants to Be Wanted side quest mission, and you should just receive one as a quest reward. Number 5. The Serpent's Combat Rifle from Borderlands 1 It's a shame that the Serpents from Borderlands 1 never returned in Borderlands 2 or the pre-sequel, and while I suspect this can be somewhat attributed to some of the mechanics surrounding Corrosive in the original Borderlands, it's still kind of a shame to see what I would consider to be one of the better pearlescents not return in the game's sequel. As for the weapon itself, the Serpents is actually somewhat similar to the SNS Draco in the sense that the Serpents features similar improvements to both its recoil, projectile speed, and magazine size. However, the Serpents accessory also allows the Serpents to fire serpentine bullets and also provides a tangible damage boost compared to the Draco accessory, making it far superior to the standard corrosive accessory for combat rifles. What also makes the Serpents pretty great though is its high proc chance. Compared to a standard corrosive accessory, I think you'll find that with the Serpents accessory, you're going to get a corrosive proc more often, allowing you to better take advantage of that status effect. So not only is the Serpents a fairly competent combat rifle, but you can also use it to quickly tag enemies with the corrosive status effect and then quickly switch to another weapon to finish them off. 
And really, I think this versatility is what makes the Serpent so awesome and far more desirable than something like the TDR Avenger, which just allows the player to regenerate ammo. If you want this weapon, you can acquire it from Badass Bruisers, Badass Drifters, Cromeracks, or from Crimson Lance Chests throughout the General Knox DLC for Borderlands 1. Number 4. The Hail Assault Rifle from Borderlands 2 and the Pre-Sequel. So, the Hail is quite possibly my favorite assault rifle in Borderlands 2 in the pre-sequel. While its projectile arc is really awkward at first, if you simply aim downwards and try to get the projectiles to arc into enemies, I think you'll find that the Hail is far more effective. However, I think what makes the Hail one of the better assault rifles from both of the games is its unique set of attributes. Not only is the Hail capable of dealing splash damage, but you may also be surprised to know that the Hail has very high critical hit bonus for an assault rifle. Plus, the arc projectiles will eventually split into two after a certain distance, and as you might expect, these projectiles are unlisted, so they can benefit from the B-Shield if the player has one. And if you couldn't tell, the Hail is also a moxie weapon, and because of that, the Hail is capable of passively healing the player for a percentage of damage dealt from a variety of sources including thrown grenades or dots applied from other weapons in your arsenal. So, between the unlisted projectiles, high critical bonus, splash damage, and healing capabilities, the Hail is definitely a really good AR and, in my opinion, it's quite possibly one of the best weapons for Axton at higher levels. Especially if you can get one in every element. As for acquiring the Hail, it depends on which game you're playing. In Borderlands 2, the Hail is acquired as a quest reward by completing the fifth round of Fink's Slaughterhouse located in the fridge. As for Borderlands the pre-sequel, the hail can occasionally drop from Iwo Jira. Number 3. The Leadstorm Assault Rifle from Borderlands 2 While a lot of Seraph gear on the whole has a lousy reputation, there are definitely some good Seraph weapons that are worth taking the time to seek out, and I would say that one of those is the Lead Storm from Hammerlock's Big Game Hunt DLC. Now for the uninitiated, the best way to describe this weapon is that it's basically a weird cross between the Shred of Fire and Hail Assault Rifles in the sense that the Lead Storm possesses much of the fiery potential of something like the Shred of Fire, while it has a projectile effect that is more closely resembling the Hail. Much like the Hail, the Lead Storm's projectiles seem to travel in an arc and after a certain distance, they split into additional unlisted projectiles. However, in the Lead Storm's case, you're getting the initial projectile to split into three as opposed to the Hail's two projectiles. Also, the Lead Storm doesn't deal splash damage nor heal the player, so if you're planning on using this assault rifle, that is definitely something to be aware of. But if you want the Lead Storm, I would say that your best bet is going to be to acquire it from the Seraph vendor in the Hammerlock's Big Game Hunt DLC. Alternatively, you can also farm for one of these from Verastus as well. Number 2. The Becca Assault Rifle from Borderlands 2 When it comes to Jacob's assault rifles, let alone assault rifles in Borderlands 2, I think it's fair to say that the Becca is quite possibly the best one available in both areas. It's kind of difficult to explain exactly what this gun does, but what happens is when you fire the initial projectile, it seems to split into two with one freezing in place, while the other maintains its current velocity. After a little while, the second projectile starts traveling again, but then splits into three, effectively allowing the player to hit enemies more than twice with the same shot. As you can imagine, this effect is actually pretty cool and is quite powerful. After all, it's like the initial bullet is being replicated several times over. Plus, you might be surprised to know that because these projectiles are unlisted, they can receive full amp damage from the B-Shield, which makes the Becca an extremely powerful weapon with certain gear setups. My only complaint with this weapon is that it isn't automatic and doesn't come in all elements. However, I would say those are really just some minor complaints for a weapon that's already pretty great. If you want a Becca though, your best bet is to make sure that you have the Ultimate Vault Hunter Upgrade Pack 2 for Borderlands 2, and then farm one from the Tubbies in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode after you've reached level 61 or higher. And finally, for the greatest assault rifle of them all, number 1, the Ajax Ogre Hybrid Combat Rifle from Borderlands 1. 
If I had to describe this weapon in one word, I'd simply say perfection. While it's true that the Ogre reappeared in Borderlands 2 with the release of the Dragon Keep DLC, that version has nothing on the original, let alone the hybrid variant that I'm about to discuss. Now, it's worth mentioning that there are two Ogres in Borderlands 1. There's the regular version, which has a silvery appearance that's not uncommon among weapons produced by Atlas. However, there's also the Ajax Ogre, which is actually a variant of the Ajax Spear that spawns with the Ogre accessory for Atlas combat rifles. Of the two, I would say that the Ajax Ogre is by far the superior weapon as it combines the awesome Ogre accessory with the Ajax Spear's superior weapon parts. In particular, the Ajax Spear's barrel provides an additional damage boost along with greatly reduced recoil and projectile spread, and when this is combined with the damage increase provided by the Ogre accessory, you're getting a weapon that not only has great base damage and high fire rate, but also has incredible recoil control and accuracy. And in my mind, it's really the recoil control and low projectile spread that make this weapon truly great, and allows it to dwarf not only other weapons in its class, but also pretty much every other combat rifle available in Borderlands 1. Overall, the Ajax Ogre is truly an incredible weapon, and if you're looking for the best combat rifle in Borderlands 1, I would have to say that this is it. And if you want an Ajax Ogre, it drops from Commander Ajax during or after the This Bitch is Payback Part 2 side quest mission. Alright guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like, click the bell to join the notification squad, and one more thing before we go, feel free to leave a comment with the word Gremlin, and I'll be looking forward to that in the comments section below. Otherwise, again guys, thank you so much for watching, take care, and I'll see y'all next time.